Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at a war game recommended by Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, The Wars of Marcus Aurelius. No disclaimer needed for this one, I was generously sent a copy of the game to borrow by one of our viewers. So like I said, Liz recommended this game time and again, and she's never steered me wrong before. How'd it work out? Let's get to the list. We're going to start out with a pro at number 5, focusing on how accessible and quick to play the game is. Although the game covers a fairly epic 10 year period in the Roman Empire, turns flow by very quickly, both your actions and the enemy activations. The rules are fairly streamlined and easy to learn, and playing the whole game can take 45 minutes or an hour max, it's really quick and still enjoyable. But we're coming down to a mix for number four, and that's the variety available in the game, both in the enemy cards you'll draw and also in the actions and strategies you'll implement in your own play. On the positive side, I think the game strikes the perfect balance of having the card decks be big enough that you'll have random swings of which cards come out when, but also being small enough that you can kind of memorize the key cards and build them into your strategy. You know, oh, this one's probably coming, so I can use that to win. But on the negative side, you might feel like you memorize or learn the cards too easily, like you don't see enough variety game to game. And a big thing for me is that the core action of the game can sometimes feel repetitive. You're pushing back the same three barbarian tribes. Often it makes sense to push them back in the same order. So you might feel like you're kind of going through the same motions when you play the game a lot in a short period of time. And that leads right into another mix for me at number three, how tense the game can be, but also how it can be frustrating with the push and pull of the gameplay. So on the positive side, the designer of Marcus Aurelius partially set out to model the crazy tension and stress of trying to deal with all all these different things on your plate, and the game definitely delivers on that. Between the barbarian tribes coming down, your own senate and people at home losing faith in you, your soldiers staging a mutiny against you, revolutions in the east and west of the empire, it often feels like there is too much to deal with and you have to make tactical choices of where you want to focus. But on the negative side, this gameplay can give the game a push-pull feeling, sort of a two steps forward, one step back, where you don't feel like you really accomplish things a lot of the time. You work really hard to get one barbarian tribe up, but then another one comes crashing down and dealing with them. The first tribe comes back down. Now, the more you play, the better you're going to get at dealing with that and picking things to focus on, but still it might frustrate some players even after their experience with the game. Number two is also a mix, something I mentioned a bit previously, and that's how random and swingy, but also dynamic the game can feel. So to start with the negative this time, there are a ton of d6 rolls you make in this game to determine whether your forts stay on the board, whether you win or lose in combat, whether a tribe you've formerly conquered rebels against you again. And while to an extent the sheer volume of all these dice rolls means that no single one is going to lose you the game, there are some hugely major ones that can really destroy you like a barbarian tribe coming back. But on the positive side, this is one of the main sources of the game's tension, so you kind of have to have a lot of this randomness in there. And it also does add back in some variety to the game, because your dice rolls can have such crazy things happen, that you have to roll with the punches and adapt and still try to pull off some sort of victory anyway. And this review is going to begin and end with pros, because my final point, something I really love about the game, is the core card play mechanic. So like a lot of card-driven war games, you have cards in your hand that can either be used for generic actions or discarded for specific historical events. For me, that's always a fun mechanic, but I like it even better here because of the resource management. So you get a whole bunch of cards in spring, a decent number in summer, and only one in winter, whereas the barbarians keep on doing the same amount of stuff each time. So it has a fun kind of give and take feel to things, but what I really like is you can make tough choices to do less in this season and carry over a ton of cards into the next season, which then builds in a lot of combos, like this card will weaken that tribe, this card will let me attack them a whole bunch, this card will guarantee me a victory in the exact space. So it feels really tactical, it feels really strategic, it makes you feel clever, and also forces you to make some fun gut checks, like can I afford to let that fire sit there for a little while while I try to build up cards to smash people over here? 
Overall, I like Wars of Marcus Aurelius a lot. I think it's a really, really solid and accessible war game. I think non-war gamers would totally be able to understand and enjoy this one easily. That being said, some solo gamers are going to wish the game had more variety, wish it had less luck, wish the push and pull didn't happen so frequently. I think it kind of all fits into what the designer was going for and is kind of necessary to model the insanity of trying to be Marcus Aurelius and hold the Empire together, but it's not going to be fun for everyone. So definitely watch my playthrough, the link should have just popped up, and see whether you think this one is right for you or if you think it'll be too frustrating. Good gaming and I'll see you at the next stop.